Hello and welcome to Post to Post, the channel where we discuss all things hockey. I'm Neil, he's Justin, and today's episode is going to be about the current NHL, or current most underrated players in the NHL. So these are the guys who maybe don't get as much rec uh, recognition as they deserve, and they kind of deserve people to talk about mm. them a little more. Yep. So that's kind of our, our, our idea here. He's picked a few players, I've picked a few players, we told each other our players before this video, so... Um, so we knew going into this, but we don't know any discussion on any different player. I have no idea what he's going to say about certain players. But one interesting thing is he picked uh, total different players than I did. So he's picked five. I have eight. Yep. And uh, none of them are the same. So we're going to go back and forth and discuss, have a little discussion maybe on each player. Not not too long of a discussion, just a little discussion. Yep. So, <clears throat> Sounds good. Excuse me. So the first player that I want to talk about is Tori Krug. So not being a Boston fan, picking a Boston player is maybe controversial not really controversial but uh <laughs> unexpected i guess so yeah. i picked tory crew and he's got seven goals 41 assists for 48 points total and i picked him for this reason because um it's, it's so far it's the best season of his career he has more points than joe thornton simmons bufflin daniel sedin dowdy uh perry anisimov barkov horvat mckinnon hendrick sedin galchenyuk yager tyler johnson uh, Sebastian Ajo, Kopitar, Marlow, Spezza, Eberle, and Weber. Those are some huge names. That's a lot of names and to prove a point. <laughs> and Tori Krug has more points than all of those players. Nice. So that, that really stood out to me. So I have to give some props to Tori Krug. Nice. No, that's good. Good for Krug. Yeah, he's having an amazing year. Um, so first on my list, I just want to state before I uh, name this player, I didn't put these five in any particular order. So they're basically just my top five who I think – are having their best year and in my opinion they should be talked about a lot more from what they've accomplished this season and sadly these players just aren't really mentioned a lot even though they're having breakout years and my first name is Mark Shifley uh, to me for the Winnipeg Jets he's having an incredible season so just to do a comparison here last year Shifley had 29 goals 32 assists for 61 points on the season not not yeah, shabby. Pretty good not, season. Not shabby at all. Now this year, so far, keep in mind, still quite a few games left. He has 29 goals already, so he's tied his uh, his goal total for last season and 46 assists for 75 points, and he's currently a plus 13. Mm. So it's a career year for Mark Shifley, and this is his highest point total. And if he passes 29 goals, this will be his highest goal total as well. He's already tied it from last year, and I see him hitting the 30 for the first time in his career and potentially even 80 points on the season and in today's nhl 80 points is that's you know, huge is superstar status in today's league it really is and he's young he's like 20 yeah he's, he's very 20. young so winnipeg have a gem <clears throat> with this guy absolutely good uh, good pick uh my next pick is going to be off a team that i cheer for the most uh, montreal canadians and so of course i watch uh, montreal more than anyone else so i get to see their lineup uh, more than more than you would. Oh, yes. I, I highly doubt you watch any Montreal. <laughs> <laughs> if they're playing Pittsburgh, yes. If they're yeah. playing Boston, yes. Yeah. So uh, Paul Byron is my choice for, for underrated player. And f mainly for his uh, his goal scoring. He's got 20 goals so far this year. It's been an absolutely career season for him. 17 assists, 37 points total. And the guy's only getting paid uh, $1.7 mm. So a really good pickup for Montreal. 20 goal score for under $2 million at $1.7 is uh, pretty respectable. He has more goals than uh, Jonathan, Jonathan Taves, who's making 10.5 million. He has more goals than Rick Nash, who's making 7.8. <coughs> more goals than Kessler at 6.87, and more goal, goals than uh, Ladd at 5.5. So, obviously, not all those those guys are goal scorers. And uh, I don't know if I'd even consider Paul Byron a goal scorer until this year. But uh, if you can have that kind of output from a guy that's making 1.7 million dollars, uh, you have to be pretty happy about that. Yeah, that's an outstanding contract right now, considering those numbers. Yeah. So that's that's really good for them. Uh, next player for me is Leon Dreisaitl. Uh, last year, he had 19 goals, 32 assists for 51 points. However, he was a minus two at the end of the season. Now, this year so far, he has 26 goals, so he's already surpassed the goal total. 43 assists, he's up even higher there, for 69 points at this point in the season. And he's a plus four. So this could be the first time in his career that he could finish 
the, a season as a plus player. Now you can argue, well, he plays with you know that guy. Yeah, uh, you know, you know McDavid. Yeah, I don't even need to name him. Uh, you could have the argument, well, he plays with that guy, so you know yeah. that's that's really a, a big part of it. But I mean, when you do play with a superstar like McDavid, it really elevates your game. And uh, I mean, this is no knock on this guy whatsoever. He's really earned these points, whether he's playing with McDavid or not. He's playing some of the best hockey of his career, and uh, he's having a career year. Yeah, absolutely. Good pick. Uh, next is just a very quick one for me is Jordy Ben back to Montreal. But even when he was playing for Dallas, mm. uh, like I said, in my ranking team of of uh, one to thirty one, uh, Dallas is third on my list. So I've watched quite a bit of Dallas this year. And before he went to Montreal, uh, Jordy Ben was always a player that I I really right. uh, paid attention to because he's so responsible defensively. He's a, in my opinion, a defensive powerhouse, and he he is extremely reliable. And he's been nothing but reliable for uh, Dallas in this past couple of years, mm -hmm. and nothing but reliable for Montreal so far. So uh, I have to th have to throw some props at Jordy Ben. Nice. No, it, that was a great pickup uh, by Montreal, and I was really happy with that acquisition. I said that really filled the gap. Yeah, it surprised uh, a lot of them. people too. Yeah, it really did because I don't think a lot of people thought he was available. Mm. You know, so when that deal went down, I remember being uh, quite excited there. Uh, next up for me is David Pasternak. <clears throat> having an incredible breakout year. <clears throat> like, um, for example, last year, he had 15 goals, 11 assists for 26 points in the 51 games he played and was a plus three. This year, he has 32 goals, so he's over doubled his goal production. He has tripled his assists to 32 for 64 points so far on the year and is currently a plus nine. So he's a higher plus player. He's become double the goal score triple the setup guy mm. he's having a career year david pasternak and he's been huge for the boston bruins and, and to me he really deserves uh, some props this season yeah definitely and i've uh, watched him on the power play and i think they're using him pretty exclusively on the power play i think they're he's pretty much the go-to guy he has a lot of pl uh, power play points i believe yeah uh, correct me if i'm wrong but uh, he may be close to be leading the nhl in power play points and uh he's He's definitely up there. Yeah, he, and he, you know, he's he's got this weird stick. I don't know if you saw the video. His tape job on his stick is very mm -hmm. strange. Maybe I'll show a picture of it or something. But uh, yeah, uh, yeah, it's a that's a good pick. Nice. Uh, next for me is just another quick one. I just want to talk about Sebastian Aho. He's of course a rookie this year. He's got twenty one goals, twenty three assists, and forty four points. And uh, he, to me, he's the most under the radar rookie. Uh, Carolina doesn't get a lot of love. And uh, Sebastian Ajo has not gotten enough love this year, in my opinion. And, you know, we have a year where we have uh, Matthews and Line a and Marner and Nylander and Murray and Marinsky and yeah. the list goes on. And Sebastian Ajo is obviously not going to win the Calder. He might be in some conversation, but uh, I watched him play the other night. And then I watched him play, uh, it was probably like three weeks ago. So I've watched him play uh, twice recently, and I'm really impressed with his game. He's a really, really talented young rookie, and I look forward to watching him in the future. Nice. Good pick. Now, next up for me is Justin Schultz having a career year. Yep. Now, here's an interesting comparison just to really uh, emphasize what I'm trying to get at here. Now, in his four seasons that he played with the Edmonton Oilers, he finished in this fashion. A minus 17, minus 22, minus 17, and minus 22 staggering now currently with the penguins he is a plus 32 and he's leading the team in plus minus wow That's plus impressive. 32 he's gone from a minus 22 with his his last season in edmonton to a plus 32 with the pittsburgh penguins he has 12 goals 36 assists for 48 points in 70 games phenomenal numbers yeah it's impressive uh, as a defenseman and right now with all their injuries on the blue line he is basically their go-to guy him with uh, ian cole and he is doing incredible things for the Pittsburgh Penguins this year, and that's because they've built him correctly. Did they? That's a huge knock on the Edmonton Oilers' <laughs> previous management, by the way. So was that a trade or is that a free agent signing? Yeah, well, they brought they brought him in because basically, you know, if you look at the numbers, say minus seventeen, minus twenty two, minus seventeen, minus twenty two, Edmonton thought they were getting like the next Chris Pronger with this guy, right? When he was coming into the league, there was all this talk. There were teams trying to woo him, trying to sign him, and so on. And when Edmonton got him, they thought, wow, okay, this is the guy that's going to take our blue line to the next level and, and uh, lead us 
for years to come. The issue was they started giving him big time minutes before he was ready for it, in my opinion. And it kind of shattered the guy's confidence and uh, it really exposed him. And when he did go to the Penguins, he was brought in more on a third pairing and they slowly built this guy up as his confidence grew because they knew he had that potential. And it's turned into a huge win-win for the Pittsburgh Penguins. And sadly, he's only on a, a one-year contract, so next year could be very interesting. Yeah, it's going to take a bit of a, a hit on their cap, I think, next year, because they're going to want to keep him. So. Yeah, this is why you know they're going to have a lot of big decisions at the end of the season. they got a lot of uh, free agents coming up. Um, you know, you look at guys like Matt Cullen, Chris Kunitz. Uh, you know, these are all key guys to their, uh, to their team, so... They're going to have to really make a lot of decisions and uh, potentially only decide to go with a select few. Mm. But pick. he is my top guy. They need to have a stick around. Mm. Justin Schultz. Yeah, he's been incredible this year. Good pick, good pick. Uh, the next one for me is uh, Bernier and Gibson. Really quick. I just think that the, the, the goalie tandem there has been really good. Uh, they've been flying under the radar in, in much of the Western Conference. And Anaheim is in, I think, second in the Pacific. And I don't. They wouldn't be there without the strong play of Gibson, and then the strong relief play of Bernier. Uh, Bernier has has, in the, I'd say in the last three months, really revitalized his career. Obviously, his time in Toronto was not very it promising, uh, but he's played really, really well with uh, for Anaheim in this past couple uh, months. And uh, I don't know if you have watched any Anaheim, but if you get the chance mm. and Bernier is playing, uh, make sure to give him a look. Yeah, definitely. No, nope, that's a solid choice. Uh, last choice for me is Zach Wierenski. Now, uh, this is really his first NHL season, even though he was drafted eighth overall in uh, 2015. But in the 73 games he's played, he has 11 goals, 36 assists for 47 points, and is currently a plus 20. This is a rookie defenseman for Columbus, and his numbers are through the roof. Uh, I wouldn't expect 47 points, 11 goals out of a rookie defenseman. Mm. That's for sure. He's playing big time minutes. Columbus is putting more responsibility on this kid all the time. And he should really be in consideration for rookie of the year, in my opinion. Yeah, he should because be. Because of his numbers he's putting up. But unfortunately, you know, they're really concentrating on two other uh, key guys. And uh, Zach Wierenski kind of gets ignored. And to me, he should really be in consideration and should be in a lot more conversations yeah. for rookie of the year for what he's doing. It's phenomenal year for him yeah i agree a lot of columbus's success this year can be attributed to uh, zach Lewinsky. yeah incredible stuff um so that's all you have yep and i have three more so i'll try to get these uh, get through these pretty quickly i think we're at like 12 minutes or something like that uh ricard raquel to me this is he tops my list of underrated players uh in the nhl he has uh 32 goals 13 assists 45 points so this nice. point, his point total isn't that impressive, but uh, he's a, th- a thir- plus 30 goal scorer. Yep. And I think he's ninth, maybe 10th now of, overall in goals. So that's really impressive. And maybe some of you may, may have never even heard of, of Ricard Raquel. But uh, he has more goals than Carter. He has more goals than Kadri, Oshie, Shifley, Ovechkin, Forsberg, Simmons, Pavelski, Tavares, and McDavid. So... Pretty impressive nice. stuff from Ricard Ra- Raquel, yep. and uh, I think as of two nights ago, he was tied for goals with Patrick Kane. He may still be. Okay. So I mean, that's that's some uh, an impressive company to be in. So uh, Definitely. to me, he is the most underrated player on my list, and and in my opinion, in the NHL. Um, next, I have Robin Leonard, and this might be a little mm, could go either way because Robin Leonard. Yeah, we all know he has some problems, but uh, just hear me out. So he's got 20 wins and 23 losses. So doesn't look good. He's got more losses than wins. However, his uh, save percentage is 921, and his goals against average is 265. So his save percentage is uh, ninth in the league. I mean, you're on Buffalo. You're not even close to being a playoff spot, and your save percentage is ninth in the league. You have to feel pretty good about that. Um, his goals against average isn't really that good, but eh, it's not bad. It's it's. I mean. I think Colorado, I think Viral Lamov has like a 3.7 goals against Hammer or something crazy, but it's Colorado. So yeah. um, so he has a better save percentage than Talbot, Anderson in Toronto, Crawford, uh, Pecorene, Jones from San Jose, Schneider, uh, Fleury, Tugarask, Elliott, and Luongo. Nice. So if, if you just look at all these names and see where uh, these guys are in, in, in the playoff run. So Elliott, playoff spot. Yep. Luongo, 
unfortunately not in the in the playoffs. Talbot, playoffs. Anderson, playoffs. Crawford, playoffs. Rene, playoffs. Jones, playoffs. Schneider, not playoffs. Fleury, playoffs. Rask, playoffs. So it's it's not like he nice. has a better save percentage than all these goalies outside the playoffs. Right. He's he's competing with some of you know starters yep. for for playoff teams. So I I just wanted to give some props to Robert to uh, Robin Leonard. And then last on my list, really quickly, is Scott Darling, and he plays for Chicago. So of course he has a pretty successful front end and uh, in, in, in group in front of him. He's got 18 wins, five losses. His save percentage is 930, which is second in the NHL. And his goals against average is 2.13, which is third in the NHL. So I attribute his goals against average to the team in front of him, but I contribute his save percentage to uh, himself. Mm. Um, I think he is starter worthy. And I think if he left Chicago, which he may, I'm, this may be his last year in Chicago, I think uh, he could be a starter for a team next year. And that team could be Los, uh, Las Vegas, possibly. Could be. Who knows? Yeah, people have been saying that about Fleury as well. Yep. Could be the starting goaltender for yep. Fleury, uh, for Las Vegas. All right. Well, there's the list. I think we had 13 total, eight of mine and five of yours. Yep. So we want to know uh, what you guys think. Uh, do you guys agree or disagree with any of our choices? And is there anything, any names on these lists that uh, you don't think should be there at all? Uh, what names are missing from our lists? Let us know down in the comments below. Maybe list, I don't know, your top five underrated players or something in the mm. comments. Uh, we'd love to see those. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. So uh, thank you very much for watching. We really appreciate it. If you want to contact Justin, where can they find you? At JustinTheMan87 on Twitter. And you can find me on Twitter at post to post show Otherwise, the best uh, way to, to interact with me is definitely down in the comments. So it doesn't even have to be about uh, the most underrated players. Leave any kind of comment in the, in the comment section and I'll be sure to reply. Um, otherwise, if you're not subscribed, we hope you hit the subscribe button and join us here. We are releasing a lot of content pretty frequently. And uh, yeah, just thanks again for watching this video, and we'll see you in the next one. Adios.